Hey guys, so I uh, I made this thing. So it originally started out as a Ryobi supercharger, as you can see there. And uh, I was hanging out with a couple of my buddies. They're big DeWalt guys. And I said, hey, that's great if you're building decks or building houses, but uh, Ryobi's pretty good. If uh, you just don't have to use it every once in a while, you don't really care about that duty cycle stuff. So I had this, I got a ton of batteries because it's on sale. Everyone's trying to upgrade the HP lineup. So I have some of these, they're numbered just because they get they get beat up. So I like I like keeping track of which one's beat up. So if I know I want them for a beat up job, I don't have to grab a nice one. Well, regardless, this is the supercharger that I have severely, severely modified internally. And the externals are actually very, very tame for what it, for what it is. Well, getting back to the whole DeWalt story, I was looking and they have a really cool thing where you can... It's called, I think they call it a power station, where you can plug stuff in, plugs, and it'll, uh, you can charge the batteries if you plug it in, and it can discharge from the batteries all the way up to something like a car outlet or an inverter. So I took that, and I was like, hey, I do not think Ryobi makes one of these for the 18-volt lineup. So I just went ahead and wired up a quick little uh, circuit. I this was my very crude adaptation of what it is and for all intensive purposes we're only looking down here so my current circuit uh involves using six individual single throw single pull switches but uh in the future let's say if ryobi were to for some odd reason watch this you could use a uh single throw six pole switch and uh the reason you need to do that and the reason I designed it this way is because this, each one of these are the batteries, you have your switches, and these are diodes, more specifically blocking diodes. I'll show the exact model up on the screen right now. Um, and then these diodes do draw some current from static, and I know a lot of people like to store batteries in here. And uh, leaving them in here, I didn't want them to drain, so that's why there, I have these switches on here. I'll go through this, then I'll go through the physical product. They have these individual switches, which I like because I can select which battery I'm pulling from, and more on that later. And then all it does is have blocking diodes, so this battery, let's say this is closed, this is closed, this battery cannot charge this battery. So they are all still re fully retaining their charging ability. Here, let me prove that. Let me plug this in. This still fully retains its charging ability of the batteries. You'll see that these are all fully charged, but it'll go through the process of charging, or at least verifying the charge of these batteries. And it fully retains its charging features while also now being able to discharge. And this was kind of my version one. It had an XT60 output, so based off that schematic, any switch you flick here, they're all off currently. Anyone you switch will connect the positives of these individual connectors. So I will also show some of my uh, wiring. I used rather low gauge wire just for prototyping and it's what I had. Uh, obviously for a commercial product, you'd want higher gauge wire to uh, kind of dummy proof it uh, and also allow a reasonable safety factor. Well, so these are charged, and uh, just to show its ability to run independent of charge, I'll disconnect it. And so the six switches on the back correspond to these. Each one is each battery. So this, 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 this. So you can choose which one, or you could choose all of them, or it's a mixture. So I will show you this view. Flip, let's see, in our case, battery four. Flip this switch, takes a second. Now this screen, all it is, all it is is reading throughput amperage and uh, voltage, overall voltage. So this was my little uh, testing circuit I made. You can see uh, this is the actual wiring diagram of it. Just a simple throughput amperage on here and then it just monitors the overall voltage. And that I believe is comfortable up to 10 amps but uh, I'm not too worried about any draws or anything like that because I can fix it if I mess it up. Well, so now we are currently discharging from only one battery and it is discharging from here. So this is, I mean, this is the output on my V1, my V2. 
was able to uh, kind of go off that output, share the positive of that output, and now I have this uh, DC to DC buck converter on the back, which is actually very, not very nicely mounted in my opinion. And then this switch completes the circuit to make it live, because as well as the blocking diodes having a parasitic draw, so does a buck converter. So I flip the switch for that. You'll see it. Maybe you won't. All right. Well, you won't. Well, I will look around for a moment. All right. Well, I have a a 12 volt inverter just for demonstration purposes. This is a rather old one. I know new ones are compact. This one doesn't have a fan, so I like it. It's pretty quiet. We'll plug this into here. That was this making that noise. And you see there is a draw. And this is 20 volt is reading the single battery. So uh, another cool feature we can do, we can just, uh, it, as this one drains, it will essentially slowly lower this because you know the charge voltage is 20 and they can start getting lower around 17. So you can flip any number of these on and they're all fully charged. So this number isn't gonna go up. That's that turning off. This fully has the ability to selectively choose which battery you want to discharge from, or all of them, as I was showing. And the buck converter. So, all it is, is this simple circuit, blocking diodes, uh, individual switches, that was my preference. And the buck converter, all it does is just basically go off of the main positive and the uh, main ground. So nothing really special here. Uh, I initially started testing before I had the buck converter in there. This was my original design. I just kind of shoved this wire in here to make it work. This design is I uh, essentially made a whole modular thing. I know Ryobi has this now, but uh, this was kind of my cheapo little $20 variant because I know theirs is uh, $50 or $60. So nice little 3D printed thing. Uh, I could probably link my Thingiverse or something. Not worrying about security or anything uh yeah so this is that this plug as you can see you get that green light there so that's this if we this was purely for testing uh ideally this wouldn't be here if, if you were to make one you can plug the xt60 in down here and if i flip one of these on there you are you have your 20 volts output to your inverter and yeah so uh that's all i got for you and I, I very much encourage if someone has some ability to talk to Ryobi because I know they have a 40 volt power station esque thing. And I know there's one excellent guy out there on YouTube doing this. Uh, and I just like to just kind of share my, my achievement, kind of. See if anyone else can make one better or maybe get in touch with Ryobi to make something like this because this is very useful. Think about this. You just all you have to do is grab this. You can either bring up your this and then your bag of tools or this and just go camping and you just have all this in this nice compact form that you don't really have to you don't have to carry about a, a bunch of other stuff around for it you can obviously plug in your your like your 12 volt to usbs and this this usb is still stock form so it only works when it's plugged in but you can plug in like your little car 12 volt to usb adapters you can plug in inverters you can really plug in anything you want to that and it just draws from whichever one you select and then flip the buck inverter on. So uh, I don't know if anyone, I can maybe go through some testing with this, maybe some load testing or efficiency testing, but maybe later video. But this is what I made. And if anyone has any, I don't know, any recommendations or anything to improve it, I'm kind of done with taking this apart because after taking this apart and putting it back together so many times i'm kind of done with this overall build but if anyone has any other things i can tweak with any other ryobi products i can mess with because i have i have i basically have every other ryobi tool in a bag out in my garage so this is what it is and uh i encourage everyone to make it i'll have a parts list down in the description you can go check out basically everything i used everything i built it with and all it is is just know how to solder and it's actually uh, not too bad. And the the most concerning thing I found was why isn't why isn't this a product out on the market? Because this is really cool. You can even dabble in like the uh, camping sector or people that want to go off roading and whatnot. Uh, well, 
I'll leave you off with that. And I hope you guys have a good day.